Hello, everyone. Welcome back to In The Art Podcast with your host, Colin Savala and Braden Cox, as we record here on February 1st. Um, the Niners and the Kansas City Chiefs will be facing off in the Super Bowl. So Braden and I are going to give you our reactions to the championship weekend and give our possibly give our preview for the Super Bowl. We'll see how long it takes for us to to recap the AFC and the NFC championship games. Um, but obviously, as many of you know by now, um, Niners were able to come back versus the Lions and the Chiefs kind of manhandled the Ravens, um, you know, after Lamar's MVP season. And Brandon and I are going to give you our initial reactions um, and give our analysis on what happened there. Um, so let's start with the AFC side of things. Um, you know, Chiefs Ravens was pretty close most of the game. Ravens had a lot of opportunities, um, but then came up short after having two uh, red zone basically I think one was actually red zone the one from like 25 um, turnovers in the fourth quarter and then after that was kind of kind of lost from there so Braden give our reaction I know you said you had a high high expectation for the Chiefs like you knew that they had a good shot at winning because they were the Chiefs um, but I think we both predicted the Ravens to move on because they looked yeah. like a little different this year on um, the head Lamar having an after off an MVP season they smoked the Texans um, and they have one of the best defenses in like in the league. So the chiefs go into Baltimore and take care of business. Um, so what's your initial reaction to that? Yeah. So my first thing is, is I don't know for you or about you, but this didn't feel like it was a seven point victory for the chiefs. You felt this, like they dominated, felt, right? This felt like it was like 27, 10. That's how I felt. That's how I felt when they were playing the bills. I felt like, even though there's so many lead changes and there's like one score game most of the time, I felt the chiefs were in control the whole time. Like they just, everything was going for them. They, and they maybe, they that, maybe, maybe I think, or I feel that way about the Ravens chiefs game, just because it was like on the lower scoring side. Like I, like I, I predicted, I yeah, said, yeah, you said I expect scoring. this game to be lower scoring, but if you would have told me, and I think you said this, that the Ravens were going to hold Patrick Mahomes and the chiefs to 17. I think we both would have been like, yeah, the Ravens are going to win this game, man. Right. Because we would both expect them to score more than 17 points based off of what we've seen all year. They manhandled the 49ers. They blew out the Dolphins. Um, blew out the Texans they blew, in the division. They blew out the Texans. They beat up on the Lions. They beat up on the Seahawks. They blew. They beat up on a lot of good teams this year. So – if you would have said, hey, the Chiefs are only going to be able to score 17 in this game, I think we both would have been like, yeah, no question the Ravens are going to win this game. But I think the Ravens went away from what they did best all year, and that was run the ball. They didn't run the ball like the entire game. No. It felt like the Ravens we saw for the since September, really, they deviated away from what they've done best. And yeah, Lamar has had an MVP season, and he's going to win MVP. But like, and a lot of people are like harping on it. Like, oh, like, you know, he had that pick. Uh, late in the game in the triple coverage. And yeah, that was a bad read for sure. Um, you know, the tight end there shouldn't have been calling for the ball in the first place, but Lamar should have should known better than to throw it. Um, but I, it almost felt like they they really gave Lamar no chance. And the Ravens had opportunities, like you said. Like they had the, if that, he doesn't fumble that ball at the half yard line, we might be having a completely different conversation. Oh, about yeah. This game. I think a different conversation about this game. But yeah, it I felt just, like it was. It, it felt like Lamar was like. like it's like they wanted like him to play superhero hands behind his back at the whole game. It, yeah, you know it's like mean? they wanted him. It's like they kind of were restricting him to do like what he did all season, kind of thing. Like you know, be a threat with his legs, um, and you know, not they didn't really establish the run at all. Um, they didn't establish the QB run. They didn't establish the QB option really. Um, and then the fourth quarter comes around, and then they're like, "Okay, Lamar, go save us." And then by that time, it was kind of too late at exactly. that point. Um, it, so yeah, it I felt think... like what we had, it felt like what we saw like in previous years. Like that's yeah. that's the Ravens that I remember having with Lamar for the past few years is they would dig themselves in a hole, a doable hole, but then they basically ask Lamar like, okay, go be spectacular, and it didn't work, which is completely different than what they did all year. Which is why I think both yeah. of us went and picked them because it's like, well, they're doing something different this year, yeah, and it's worked like very well against very good teams. Um, but you know, it, it, it stinks for the Ravens just because it, it felt like they had no chance. Like they did, but they didn't. It just, yeah. 
it's like the Chiefs are. They were true, like the Chiefs were in control the whole time. Um, from the kickoff, really. Uh, yeah, yeah. So because really, yeah. I think the Chiefs went right down the field, and then Baltimore struggled a little bit, and then finally got in the end zone. Um, um there was a little banter going on. Got yeah, it. and it just sucks that you're going to hear the same Lamar, Lamar Jackson choked in the playoffs again narrative. You're going to hear that all season again. Um, you know, there's not not as much talk about him considering he's you know signed that contract. Unlike last year, where he's a free agent, but um, yeah, I just think there are people who are still going to buy into the the Lamar choked in the playoffs and everything. But I think, like you said, the Ravens just completely deviated from what they've done all year. They didn't establish yeah. a run. Um, they just didn't. They felt like they didn't really didn't really have a game plan. And yeah, I get credit to the Chiefs um, for preparing. Of course, of course. Um, you know, probably throwing them off a little bit, but still, like I feel like um, you you also saw with the Bills a little bit, like things didn't go their way from the start, kind of thing. And they just completely went away from what they've been doing all year. Um, that got them to that point. And then I think I feel like you just got to trust your system at that point. Um, and, and honestly, play like man, you have been all season. And then even though it's the Chiefs, like I know it's you're like it's the Chiefs. Like we gotta we gotta play we gotta play better. But like I don't know. I just feel like you gotta you gotta stick with what got you there in the first place. Yeah, and honestly, man, I think I think this is just the case of like you ran into the chiefs like, and I, it's not taking anything away from the chiefs or, you know, it, 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 to me, this is more so about the chiefs championship culture to go play in the frigid temperature against Miami where like, really like they, they dominated and were the better team. Um, no questions, all, all aspects of the ball. And then they went to Buffalo on the road, Patrick Mahomes' first road playoff game. So there's all those narratives, right? And it's like, oh, this is Josh Allen's best shot. And they pretty much dominate that whole game. It came down to the wire, but they pretty much dominated that game. And then you ask him to go to Baltimore. And he didn't play, like, astounding, but he played more than good enough to win. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So really, like, I kudos to whatever the Kansas city chiefs figured out like in the last like two months of the season or in the past two months, because if you go back in September, October, like Mahomes is like terrified even later, like even like that Christmas game against the Raiders was a mess for the chiefs. Right. And that's the end of the season. Um, you know, Mahomes had like no confidence with his O line and now it's like polar opposite. Yeah. They have any confidence. O line they got, didn't have any confidence in the receivers. Um, but look at scaling. Valdez yeah. Scanling's like open and he's catching ball like that. We didn't see that all year, right? Which is why I was higher up on the Chiefs and I think a lot of people because I was like, this team has done this before and they like they're, they're they're like a step behind. But like, if there's anybody that can do it, it's the Kansas City Chiefs. And then they go to the two seed Buffalo, control the game. They go to the one seed Baltimore, control the game. So kudos to them, Andy Reid. Beyond incredible stuff, um, you know, a lot of it does come down to coaching. I think like having like I said, the O line being kind of a mess and Mahomes having no confidence in it. Like what feels like a month ago, like month, six weeks ago, all of a sudden, like just they figure it out. Like that's coaching. You know what I mean? To just figure it out like that. It, you know, we might, we had got a dynasty, I think, especially if they win it, we got yeah. a dynasty on our hands. Yeah. For sure. Um, yeah. Just one more note. I think, like you said before, I just can't believe the Ravens only scored 10 points. Like I know, I know the Chiefs defense is good. You got Andy Reid. You got the defense coordinator. Uh, but like only scoring ten points. I don't know. I don't know if the Ravens only scored ten points all season. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, it's just it was just crazy that I don't know. I just nothing really went the Ravens' way. You had the, those two turnovers um in the red zone there, and um yeah, then the Chiefs ended up coming out of it with the seventeen ten win. So. It, it's weird because you see you see them go on the road to the two like the one and the two seed right, and both teams like you said go completely away from what like made them great all year. Yeah, and, and then the whole that, team. That, it, and do you think that that's just like, oh my god, we're playing the Chiefs? I like, feel like, like it. I feel like it probably has something to do with it. It's yeah. just kind of like the Kansas City Chiefs are coming to town, and you panic, or do you think that it's? There's something else going. There's, you know, other factors. I feel like I feel like it's probably a mixture of both. I feel like, you know, people they probably try to change their game plan around a little bit considering it's the Chiefs. Um, but also yeah. you gotta give credit where credit's due with Mahomes and Andy Reid 
and what they do over there. So I would say a combination of both. Like thinking back on it, I can't imagine playing the Patriots in the playoffs with Brady. Could you imagine having to go into Gillette with like, you know what I mean? Because it's like Tom Brady. You know what I mean? Yeah. And Gronk, like it was in Belichick. It's like, no, no wonder, like it was, they, they went and won six Super Bowls because it's like, how do you beat that? Right. It's like the Chiefs now. It's like, how do you beat that? They just outsmart you. You can have the best team of all time, and it just seems like that they're going to outsmart you. Because they then, got Andy Reid. Yeah. And then when you feel like you finally did outsmart Mahomes, he'll, he'll make a spectacular play uh, yeah. for like a gain of 30 yards, and it's first down, and they have all the momentum again. It's just, it's just how it is yeah. with them, it seems like. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's good stuff. I mean, it's – you know, for a lot of people are like, oh, we got to watch the Chiefs again. But it's like, if you're a fan of the game, just as a whole, like, it's like, this is, this is cool stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? As, as a like, Bengals majority fan. Of people, majority of people were probably rooting for Baltimore there. Um, but you, you got to give credit where credit is due. As a Bengals fan, I hate this, but you just got to respect it at this point. Like, the, I, I think calling it a dynasty is, you have to call it a dynasty at this point. They this is that was their what sixth straight AFC championship and this is their fourth Super Bowl and yeah, I think I think if they win it, I think if they win it, it's a dynasty. I mean, but to be this consistent, they've only won though, two. If they go two and two, is it a dynasty in Super Bowls? I mean, I feel like making it to the Super Bowl, like it's still an accomplishment in itself, right? Especially since this year, like they they were horrible, like not horrible. Horrible for the Chiefs. Yeah, standards. no, this uh, to me horrible to for me, their this standards. Be, they were, I would say, but to me, this is their most impressive run. And if they win the Super Bowl, it would be their most impressive rank. Okay, but I don't know if I would. If they win it, yeah. If they lose, though, I don't know if we can definitively say it's a dynasty. Yeah. So I mean, probably, but because I we could say probably it's a dynasty because I think you and I both would agree that like we wouldn't be shocked at all if, like, the next three seasons, they were in the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? No. No, no because so. me, as a, me as a Bengals fan, you always think, can you get past Mahomes to make to make yeah. the Super Bowl? You just got this yeah, you gotta be, think about every... tough to play in the AFC. Yeah, it's not fun. Um, There's only two, quarter, only two get quarterbacks, once, quarterbacks have beaten Mahomes. Only two quarterbacks have beaten Mahomes in the playoffs. Burrow and Brady. Burrow and Brady. All right. How long? How long has it been? Should we do another? Should we do another NFC recap or? Yeah, yeah. Let's do the NFC real quick. NFC real quick. Okay. Um. So, Niners, Lions, Lions had control of the first half. Um. Yeah. I think it was what, what was it twenty four seven at halftime. Something like that. 24, twenty four. I think it was twenty four seven. Seven or ten, yeah, something. Um. Like that. And then the Niners came back, turned it on in the second half, and kind of completely dominated. They had the lead. I think by the time the fourth quarter even started. Yeah. Um. You know, Lions. I would. I could kind of want to say the Lions choked it a little bit. They they were dropping a lot of balls. They were turning it over a little bit. Um, but but again, give credit where credit to with the with the Niners and what they did. Um, the cause those turnovers and, um, you know, Brock Purdy kind of kind of came out of his element there and balled out in the second half. So give me your initial reaction to the Niners win over the Lions. Yeah, I would I would agree with you that the Lions kind of did choke this a little bit because just because like they had opportunities and. A lot of people are harping on Dan Campbell for yeah. going for it. That's definitely, and definitely, a, down. yeah, definitely a subject we should get into here. Yeah, and it's it, it's tough, right? Because the, the thing that made the Lions so fun to watch and what made them great all year and won them games was the fact that Dan Campbell was ballsy and would go for it on fourth yeah. down. That's kind of what their magic was all year. So. And I'm a Packers fan, right? It's it's tough for me to like critique Campbell really hard in this situation because it's kind of what it's kind of what made them so great all year, mm -hmm. and he stuck to yeah. the script. But what I will say, right, is you had two, like you lost by three, and you had two shots to kick field goals. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's the thing is like they didn't lose by a touchdown, they didn't lose by 10, they lost by three, and they had two shots. It's like 
there, there, there's a little bit in me that thinks that he might not have all the trust in the world in his kicker, which would be surprising for one. And two, I think Campbell needed to understand the, the, the situation a little bit more, right? Especially um, the late one, right? Because, like, you're playing the 49ers, points are at a premium. You know what I mean? Like, you you take those points, especially especially late when, like, they're kind of kicking your ass in the second half. Like, you need you need any sort of momentum on your team. If you yeah. go for it on fourth and you miss it, like, the first one that happened, the one that happened earlier in the game, like, I can't blame them too much for, right? Because they were also playing with someone of a lead, like, and they were confident. So I can get that there. The one late is, like, the 49ers are taking it to you right now. Take the points. Because if you don't, like they didn't, they're the kind of team that'll make you that'll make you pay for it, and they did. Yeah, yeah, but you you could also look at it this way. You could also look at it. Okay, we're playing the Niners. Three points isn't going to cut it. So you, you you could say it's do or die. You have to go for the seven. Like I could I could see both. I don't know what the analytics say. I don't know. I didn't really get into that. But like you kind kind of got to look at it from both sides and say like is three points really worth it against. I guess a team like the 49ers where they have scoring machines everywhere. Um, yeah. I, I like them and taking that- the risk. And like you said, um, you hit this as well. I think I didn't mind the calls and the decision-making until that last drive before. Um, I think it was the last drive and they kicked – or they scored a touchdown, but they, yeah. they ran the ball in like second and goal from the one. They got stuffed and they had to take a timeout. That's That was kind of the nail on the head because then, then you had to get the onside kick. Um, to even have a chance, um, but like, like I feel like it should have come down to that anyway. I think exactly. Um, I thought the the play calling was fine. I feel like sometimes, like I think there was like a, a third and short or a fourth and short. Um, well, a couple it was, times, it was fantastic there, in the first half. Yeah. Um, and it was like the receivers were kind of dropping the ball, and golf was kind of rushing a little yeah. bit. Um, but I think it, it's just really hard to put the blame on Dan Campbell, especially after what he's done for this franchise. Yeah. Um, he's won, he's won the first, he's won the first playoff game in, in That's our lifetime, I think 32 yeah, years. For sure. And, yeah. um, you know, he just, he was a couple plays away from bringing him to the Super Bowl. The first, first, this is second year, right? Yeah. So his second year, his first real year, like under, like, you know, after having experience and all that. So yeah. gotta give credit where credit's due there. I think, and I didn't, I know um, like what you said about, you know, his, his play calling and going for it all the time is what brought them there um, in the first place. So I think I, I kind of got to respect him for, for sticking to uh, what brought them there in the first place. Kind of like what we talked about early in the episode, um, how, you know, Harbaugh and the Ravens um, and even McDermott and the bills kind of run away from what brought them there. Um, yeah. But Dan Campbell stuck with, it, it was just unfortunate that um, it just didn't work out the way. Um, and you know, and I feel like if you ask him, like, would you would you go for it again, like after the game? I feel like, I feel like he said, yeah, I'd go for it again. Like, yeah. I just I don't think he really regrets what his decisions there. I think it's why well, he went with his gut and just unlucky outcomes is what it came down yeah, to. And, and you know, two things. Um, if if let's say he converts on those fourth downs, we're sitting here and we're calling him coach of the year. You know what I mean? Right. Genius. If he were to have converted there. He's coach of the year, right? Yeah. Because it's like, oh, what a brilliant play call on fourth down, but then they don't get it. And now we're like, oh, well, it's his fault. You know what I mean? So it's like, you got to look, kind of look at it from both perspectives, right? Is if they pick it up, we're looking at it as like, wow, that was a great play. It was a great play call. They don't pick it up. And then we're looking at it in, in a negative sense. And another point I'll go back to is um, the, the point I made about like momentum is the 49ers had all the momentum late. That's why that late field goal, I take the points. That's fair. Right? And I'm not harping on him. I think a lot of people are harping on him too hard, especially with all he's done, like you said, this year. That lit, that one later in the game, I, I would have taken just to get points and have any sort of momentum on your side. I get if you pick up the I, – I, I understand completely. If you go for it and you pick it up, you swing the momentum your way, right? But that doesn't guarantee touchdown, right? To me – at that point in the game, it looked like that the 49ers were just going to completely take control of the game, which they did. If you take the points there, we could be having a different conversation. So. Yeah. 
All right, let's let's get away from the Dan Campbell topic. Um, and let's yeah. let's go over to the 49er side of things. Yeah. Um, I was kind of didn't have super high hopes for Brock Purdy. I didn't love the way he played um against the Packers. Um, and even the first even in the first half, I was like, damn, this is the this is the Purdy I was talking about. Um, this is this is the one he's not gonna win your Super Bowl. Um, but obviously he came around, turned around in the second half, and he heard pretty you. much I pretty much had a perfect rating, I think. Um, in the second half and was able to overcome and you know a lot of credit to, to uh, McCaffrey in the run game um, the defense for making some plays also but um, at the end of the day Niners and Brock Purdy are going to the Super Bowl so um, he proved me wrong and and yeah give me your I know you were high on Purdy all season right so give me your give me your thoughts on him yeah well honestly like I wasn't I wasn't really super high on Purdy because at the beginning of the season I actually picked Seattle to win this division Right. I did, there were so many question marks. There were question marks with the 49ers and Purdy. Like he had just been injured. Is he going to come back and be the same? We don't really know. And their about their other option was like Trey Lance or Sam Darnold, whoever it was at the time. Um so like as the season progressed, I got more confident in him. Um, but I think he deserves a lot of credit with how he played. He's a quick little guy. Like he's got yeah. he's got jets. He can run. He the his the run game that he you know that he put on like was clutch was very clutch in that game um so i think he kind of shut a lot of the naysayers up with his second half performance but he's it always it, it seems like he's always going to have his haters like the guy's going to have to win like the nba finals in order to get their you know recognition their respect. You know, to, and even exactly. if he does win the super bowl people are going to say oh it's the system yeah, um, exactly. But you know, so the system like, can only take you so far, man. It can only, look at like, Bill Belichick and the Patriots now. Are you going to discredit him because he's got talent around? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like at the end of the day, it's like I don't really, you know, I don't think that's really too fair. But no, I mean, congrats to the 49ers. I think they were the better team all year. I picked them to win the NFC um, and advance the Super Bowl um, when the playoffs started, just because yeah. like roster wise, top to bottom, they were the best. Yeah, like, for sure. I thought Detroit would be like a big test for them because they're young. And they might want it more. Um, and for the first half, they they were they were the better team. But then the 49ers showed, you know, at the end of the team, at the end of the day, like good teams know how to push through. You know, being down, you know, seventeen plus at halftime, yeah. the biggest game of many of their careers, right? And that's exactly what they did. So, uh, yeah. Chiefs 49ers in the Super Bowl might not be everybody's most, you know favorite pick to see in the Super Bowl but I think overall like I don't get why people would be like a football fan would be mad with this because this is going to be a really exciting Super Bowl I feel like yeah two heavyweights going at it yeah I just want to say I texted you this earlier I was I was a couple plays away from having the perfect bracket on the NFC side yeah um I had the I had the all the matchups right and I did have the Lions upsetting the Niners to advance to the Super Bowl, and it almost happened, um, but like like we said, uh, came up just short. Um, yeah. But it was a good run for my picks there. I, I'm I'm happy with how it came out, and I'm kind of glad because I when it's all said and done, I think the Niners, um, you know, as as a Bengals fan, like I said before, I just I don't want to see the Chiefs win it again, and then hear all this Mahomes go talk. Uh, I I think the Niners have a better chance at being the Chiefs than the Lions would. Um, so, and we'll get it. We'll, we're going to talk about this role in the next episode. Um, yeah. so, um, but yeah, I just, I'm glad the Niners made it, but the chiefs completely messed up my AFC side. So, so props to them, but yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. That's all I got. Yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah, we'll get, we'll do our super bowl, uh, super bowl preview and predictions in the next episode. Um, yeah. thanks everyone for listening. Um, Colin and Brayden. Subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Spotify, leave a comment, um, and give us your reactions and how you feel about um, the Super Bowl matchup here.